Okay, we're going to do some more practice problems with uh, word problem applications starting on page 85. All right, question one says, a CD is priced at $15, but is on sale for 20% off. What is the sale price of a CD? And I'm going to work these the same way we did in the lesson. I had a little formula. The original times whatever percent you're paying, and that's not the percent of the discount, equals the new. So the original price for the CD, the original price is $15. Since it's on sale for 20% off, the sale price, the percent you're paying is 80%, which in a decimal is 0.80. We don't know what the new price is. That's what we're trying to find. So you can see, to figure out the new price, we multiply the original tr price times the 80%. Um, again, I'm going to make sure that you guys recognize I'm not using the 20% because that involves having to do two steps then. If we use whatever percent is left after we take 20% off, we're using 80%. So 15 times 0.8, and you guys can multiply this off to the side, makes $12 for the new price of the CD here. If a Sony PlayStation costs $250 after 15% discount, what was the original cost? And again, I like that same formula. The original times whatever percent you're paying equals the new. So this time we know the new price is $250 because that says that's what we're paying after the discount. The discount is 15%, <clears throat> but that's not what we're paying. After they take 15% off, we're paying 85%. So the original price is the X. That's what we're looking for this time. So to, to find this X, we have to divide by 0 0.85. 250 divided by 0 0.85 It's going to give us the original price. Um, and you can do that off to the side somewhere. Round it to the nearest cent. It comes out to be... $294.12. If a Palm Pilot costs $1,300 after a 20% increase in price, what was the original cost? Again, the original times whatever percent you're paying equals the new. This time we know the new price of the Palm Pilot is $1,300. The original, we don't know. So that's going to be X. What percent are we paying? It's a 20%, but this time it's an increase in price. So before, on the other two examples, it was a sale price. So we subtracted whatever the percent was off of the 100. This time, since it's the increase, we need to add the 20% to a 100. So that would make 120% that we're paying. In a decimal, that's 1.2 because you move that decimal two places. So to figure out X here, we have to divide by 1.2. And of course, again, you can do that off to the side. Round it to the nearest cent, you get $1,083.33. All right, here we have an interest question. Find the simple interest percent if you invested $1,000 for five years and you receive $500 in interest. So we need to start with the formula. Interest equals principal times rate times time. And then we take the numbers and we substitute them in wherever they belong. So if we invested $1,000, that would be the principal. So we're going to replace P with 1,000 for five years, and that will be the time. And we earned $500 in interest, so that's the I and we're looking for the rate. So the R is still there. So we're solving for that R. To do that, we need to simplify here on the right. So five times 1,000 makes 5,000 times R equals 500. To solve for this R, we're going to divide by 5,000. And you end up with this fraction over here on the left. We just have R over here on the right. 
um, we're going to reduce this fraction down as far as we can, and then we need to send it. We need to change it to a percent because we're looking for rate, and the rate is always a percent. So we can reduce this fraction. Let's start by reducing off some of these zeros. So we're left with five over fifty. When we reduce that, that makes one over ten. All right, one tenth in a decimal is zero point one in a percent, ten percent. So that's the interest rate, ten percent. All right, number five is a rectangle. The width of a rectangular garden is eight meters less than its length. Its perimeter is 76 meters. Find the length of the garden. I'm going to start with a picture like I always like to, especially with the geometry questions. The width of the rectangular garden is 8 meters less than the length. So width goes here. 8 meters less than the length would be the length minus 8. And this is the length. The perimeter of this garden is 76 meters. So to solve this question, we have to start with a formula for perimeter. So let's write the formula for perimeter here. Perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times length plus 2 times width. And then we use the information we have to get rid of as many variables as we can. Well, we know the perimeter for this rectangle is 76, so we can get rid of P. We don't know anything about length, so we're going to have to leave the L in. But... We do know the width is equal to the length minus 8. So we can take this W out and replace it with L minus 8, as long as we use parentheses because it's being multiplied times the 2. The length is equal to L minus 8. I'm sorry, the width is equal to L minus 8. So if we substitute L minus 8 for W here, we have only one variable left, which is the L, and we can solve for that variable. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start simplifying this equation, distribute the two, combine like terms here. These are like terms. So that makes 4L minus 16. Add 16 to both sides. Get 92 equals 4L. And then Divide both sides by 4. You end up with L equals 92 divided by 4 is 23. So the length of the garden is 23. Uh, looks like the units are meters. Length equals 23 meters. All right, on the second page here, we've got another geometry question at the top. The perimeter of the triangle is 51 inches. The length of the middle side is 5 inches more than the length of the smaller side, and the larger side is 4 inches less than 3 times the length of the small side. Find the length of the middle side. All right, that sounds really complicated at first. So we're just going to break it down little by little. And we're going to first draw a triangle. I need to make enough room here, though, so we can actually see it. We're going to first draw a triangle. Okay. The triangle has a small side, a medium side, and a longest side. And then we're going to read the information and make some expressions. It says the perimeter of the triangle is 51, so I'm going to write that right in the middle. The length of the middle side, so that would be this side, right here, is 5 inches more than the length of the smaller side. So I'm going to write an expression here for the middle side. 5 inches more than the smaller side would be the smaller side plus 5. And you have to make your S's and your 5's very distinct with this question. So this is S standing for the small side, 5 inches more than. And then it says the length of the smaller, let's see, the, the largest side is 4 inches less. So that's the largest side over here. 4 inches less than 3 times the length of the smallest side. So 3 
times the smaller side minus 4. That's 4 inches less. This is the 4 inches less, subtracting 4, then 3 times the smallest side. Find the length of the middle side. So we first need to uh, write a formula for the perimeter of a triangle would be the perimeter equals the small side plus the middle side plus the long side. And then we're going to substitute in as many numbers as we can when we know the perimeter is 51. We don't know anything about the small side, so we're leaving that S in. We know the middle side is S plus 5. So instead of putting M, we're going to put S plus 5. And again, making sure your S's look like S's and your 5's are distinct, or you'll get confused. Uh, the long side is 3S minus 4. So we're going to put in here 3S minus 4. And now we have an equation that we're solving. We're going to start by combining like terms on the right. We have an S, another S, and a 3S. And those are all like terms, and that makes S51 equals 35S. Then we have a positive 5 and a negative 4. So when we combine those, we get negative, a positive 1. So 51 equals 5S plus 1. Subtract 1 from both sides because we're solving for this S. So subtract 1 from both sides gives you 50 equals 5S. And then divide by 5. You have 10 equals S. And that will be the length of the smallest side. However, the question asks us to find the length of the middle side, not the smallest side. So it's not that we did anything wrong. It's just that you have to find the smallest side first because... It tells you the middle side is S plus 5. So the middle side is S plus 5. We know S is equal to 10. So that would be 10 plus 5. So the middle side equals 15, and the units are inches. All right, let's look at the next question. If 10 times the numbers decrease by 29, the result is the product of 42 and a number. Write an equation to represent this statement where a number is represented with the variable x. Okay, we don't have to solve this one. We just have to write it. So we're going to go word by word. If 10 times a number, that would be 10 times your variable x, is decreased by 29, so that would be minus 29. The result is, means equals, the product of 42 and a number. Well, product means multiply, so that's 42 times your number. And that's all you have to do for this question, because we don't have to solve it. Just write the uh, expression, equation. Now we're going to create a proportion that solves this problem. The car can travel 1,200 miles on 60 gallons of gasoline. How many gallons do you need to travel 100 miles? All right. So when you're writing a proportion, it's about units. You start with uh, some fraction bars. So what are we comparing? We're comparing how many miles the car can go on how many gallons. So I'm going to mark this as miles, miles, gallons, gallons. The car can travel 1,200 miles on 60 gallons of gasoline. How many gallons do you need to travel 100 miles? So we're marking that gallons as X. And then we're going to write a proportion. If you remember from the, the earlier lessons, you do that by cross-multiplying. These products are equal. So we end up with an equation that says 1,200x equals 60 times 100. And we just simplify. 1,200x equals 
6,000, and then divide by 1,200, you get x equals, okay, we can reduce this. Let's see, we can take those two zeros off. We have 60 over 12, which you should know mentally. See, we don't need calculators. 60 divided by 12 is 5, and the units, because we were looking for gallons of gas, weren't we? The units are gallons. All right, number nine is a pretty complicated question. So we're probably going to need a lot of white space here. Two shrimp boats start from the same port at the same time, but they head in opposite directions. The slower boat travels 15 knots per hour slower than the fast boat. At the end of 12 hours, they were 600 nautical miles apart. It, it doesn't matter that they're nautical miles, you guys. So if you don't know what a nautical mile is, it's perfectly fine. It makes no difference to how you work the problem. How many nautical miles had the slow boat traveled by the end of the 12-hour period? All right, I'm going to start with a picture um, about my two boats here. I have two boats going in opposite directions like this. And we're going to call this one the slow boat and this one the fast boat. Okay. The slower boat travels 15 knots per hour slower than the fast boat. Okay, that's talking about the rate. Okay. Um, we're going to have to use some complicated variables here with subscripts. I'm going to talk, call this the rate of the slow boat, and I'm going to subscript the S. The rate of the slow boat is 15 knots slower than the fast boat. So... It's the rate of the fast boat minus 15. Okay? That's what I know. At the end of 12 hours, so they both traveled for 12 hours. So that's telling me that their time, the time for the slow boat is 12. And the time for the fast boat is also 12. At the end of 12 hours, they were 600 nautical miles apart. That means this distance from here to here is 600. I'm looking for a convenient place to write that. You know what? Maybe not there. Maybe here. Okay. How many nautical miles had the slow boat traveled by the end of the 12-hour period? All right, so we're using that distance equation. So we know that this is going to be the distance of the slow boat, and this is going to be the distance of the fast boat. If I add those two distances together, they will equal 600. So that's the basic premise. And then we have to substitute in rate times time. Distance equals rate times time. I'm going to write that over here. Distance equals rate times time, and that's what you need to work with to solve this question. So instead of rate of the slow boat times time of the slow boat plus rate of the fast boat times time of the fast boat will equal 600. And then we're just going to substitute some numbers in here. What do we know? We know the rate of the slow boat is the rate of the fast boat minus 15. We know both of them have a time of 12. So we can replace time with 12 right off the bat, and we can replace this little expression, rate of fast minus 15, instead of rate of slow. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put rate of fast minus 15 for rate of slow, and then time of slow is 12, plus we don't really know anything about rate of fast, but we do know time of fast is 12. And then we're just going to start simplifying and solving. So we need to, it looks like we have all the variables now to just uh, the rate of the fast. Distribute and simplify, solve. So we're going to have 12 rate of fast minus, what's 12 times 15? 180 plus another 12 rate of fast equals 600. 
So I've got a couple like terms here. 12 rate of fast plus 12 rate of fast makes 24 rate of fast minus 180 equals 600. I think we're going to need to maybe do something like this and carry this to over here where we have some white space. What did it say? 24 rate of fast minus 180. Oops, 180. Okay, let's try it again. 24 rate of fast minus 180 equals 600. That's where we were. So we need to add 180 to both sides. So 24 rate of fast will equal 780. Divide by 24, you should get rate of fast equals 32.5. However, again, that's not the question. We know how fast the fast boat is going now. The question is, how many nautical miles had the slow boat traveled by the end of the 12-hour period? Okay, we know the rate of the fast. We can use that information to find the rate of the slow. And then we use that information to find the distance of the slow. So we're going to have to do two more pieces here. If the rate of the fast is 32.5, the rate of the slow is the rate of the fast minus 15. So that's the first thing we need to do. The rate of the slow was the rate of the fast minus 15. So 32.5 minus 15 gives us a rate of slow equals 17.5. And then the distance of the slow equals the rate of the slow times the time of the slow, which is 17.5 times 12, because they both had a time of 12. You multiply that off to the side, you should get 210 miles. Okay, Whew. that was a tough one. All right, if a student had difficulty completely prob completing problem-solving questions, what should the students do? Ask questions, complete their homework, always go to class, take good notes, seek extra help. Obviously, the answer here is all of the above. Get the help when you need it.